I wanted to start this video out with picking up where I left off before. I mentioned some of the parts that I had been buying in the first part of the video that hadn't arrived yet. So I wanted to go over those real quick. Some of those are over here. I have the thrall bearing and the pilot bearing in here. I'm not going to take those out. Pivot ball stud for the clutch and a brand new McLeod clutch fork to go with the previously mentioned RXT clutch which is in there. And that's in the first part of the video if you did not see that for a part one for the series. Um, I did buy a rear main seal. Mine is not leaking but being that when the car is at the shop getting the clutch put in he's going to be right there anyway so I'm going to have them take a look at it and if the rear main seal looks like it is in need of being replaced that's a good time to do it. Also I have not forgotten about the KMJ alternator which long story with that I'm not going to get into it right now but I'm going to try and get that back on the car for this year so it's running with that alternator and not the stock one anymore. I also mentioned the AEM wideband that I wanted to buy and I kind of did a quick mock-up of the pillar and the gauges in it. This is how I'm going to have it set up with the lunar gauges. I'll have the boost gauge up here, what, excuse me, water temp up here, and then boost down here, and then the AEM wideband down at the bottom. So I'll have this three-pod pillar installed as well. So I'll have a better idea of keeping track of all that stuff on the car. And as you know, the stock boost gauge only goes up to 10 pounds and with a VMP on there. It's consistently pegged whenever I hit the throttle. So <laughs> uh, it's kind of good that I went with an aftermarket one. And I, I know there's boost gauge overlays you can do. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to pull the cluster out and do all of that. I like the look of the aftermarket boost gauges so much more than just doing the overlay. So that's the route that I decided to go with that. Now, as far as a big thing that I've been, uh, that I teased at the beginning of the video, as far as um, the thumbnail, I did a little bit of a teaser in a video about the Bronco. So the, uh, the Cobra people, that I don't expect to watch the Bronco stuff as much, but if you did, you did get to see this, which is an off-road X-Pipe. Now you're thinking, I already have an off-road X-Pipe, so what's the big deal? It's because that is now connected to a set of long tube headers. These are American Racing headers. I'll have to look. I can't remember if I got the 1 and 3 fourths or the 1 and 5 eighths. I'll put a text up on the screen of which ones I actually got. And the quality on these headers is really, really nice. I'm real happy with the build quality of this company. A lot of people have given a lot of props to American Racing headers and the quality of their um, quality of their headers overall. So I'll be anxious to get these put on the car. And as you can see, the big uh, catalytic converters with it. I do not live in a state that has um, emissions testing, but we do have inspections. So catalytic converters are required. And even if they were not required, I still would prefer to run them over uh, running an off-road X-pipe with no cats, which I think would make it a little bit too raspy. So that's um, the setup that I really wanted to go with. So at this point, you may be wondering, why did I do long tube headers? I know I made a video not long after getting this Cobra that I planned on not building a 750 plus horsepower Cobra. So why did I get long tube headers? Uh, it's kind of a twofold reason. Uh, one reason was that I really, really love the sound of long tubes on it. And I've heard other Cobras with long tubes and it does sound really nice. And I, I did want to go down that road with making the exhaust sound even better than what it already does with the current setup that's on it. The reason why I didn't do long tubes before this point is because uh, it was just too much to do last year. The car had a lot done to it with the blower swap and the fuel system getting put in, all the other little odds and ends that were done to it. It just didn't make sense at the time to throw that on top of it as well. And the other reason too is that 
I just wanted to wait until I got the new suspension in the car so I could get it up a little bit higher because it's really, really slammed on the coilovers right now and it's way too low to be running long tubes on it. It scrapes enough as it is without uh, long tubes on it. That's where the exhaust being tucked up really well. So I wanted to wait until I could get a proper suspension on the car for street driving in my area. You can still bottom out in the summertime. On some of the roads, side roads up here are just complete crap. So I didn't really want log tubes on the car before that point in time. But now that I have the new suspension going in, hopefully that can address that issue. The other reason why I really wanted to do long tubes was that, um, this will sound weird, but hear me out. I'm hoping to get the the boost down a few PSI. It's at 19.4 right now. I'm running a 3.3 upper pulley with the stock cage lower, which is I believe 7 point something in circumference for the lower pulley. So I cannot make any less boost than what I'm currently making. I can't do a pulley swap or anything like that to make any difference. It's the smallest upper pulley that will go on the VMP Gen 3R that is on there now. So the only way to try to make less boost, other than really dumbing down the tune, would be to try to free up the restriction. And by, do, by doing our long tubes, it's a more free-flowing exhaust, so it's not as restrictive because as a lot of people know or maybe don't know, boost is a measurement of restriction. So the more free-flowing exhaust you have, the lower the boost output will be, at least that's in theory. Uh, I have heard of people putting long tubes on cars and it didn't really drop the boost at all. I know Lost Car 5 recently put the same exact headers on his car. I asked him in his comments, specifically asked him, did you notice a boost reduction? And he said that he didn't. But I'll have to wait and see if that happens with me. So you're probably wondering, why do I want the boost lower? <laughs> why do I want theoretically to make less power. A lot of you are probably familiar with Andrew and Mustang Lifestyle and his YouTube channel. Probably a lot of you have seen his friend Lewis who has the GT350 on his channel. Lewis recently blew his car up because it was in the fall down in Florida. The temperatures dropped quite a bit. It was really cool weather and it just got in really cool air made more boosts than what it probably should have, made more power than what it did previously because of how cool the air was, and pop. That's what the speculation is. I can't 100% guarantee that's what happened, but it's very possible. As a lot of you know, I live in the Northeast. It gets very cool here in the fall. It is not out of the question to drive this car in temperatures in the low 50s to mid to upper 40s in the fall time like in October just before I put the car up it does start to cool down a lot so what I'm hoping to do is to put the long tubes on and hopefully drop the boost down to around 17 pounds instead of its current 19.4 that way I have a little bit more wiggle room where if it wants to make more boost in colder weather I have that added assurance on the other end that I'm not going to blow a head gasket or do detrimental damage to the motor by it running too lean with it making more boost than it should have and making more power than what it did when it was tuned. So that's where that stands. Whether it works out that way or not, I won't know until everything is on the car and it's dyno tuned again to see what kind of boost it's making with the long tubes on. I didn't mention it when I was in the house, but it does have 30 inch collectors into a three inch, three inch X pipe. So it's gonna be, it will sound pretty mean. I have no doubt it's gonna sound really, really good. And I already think it sounds good. I'm not unhappy with how the car sounds. I just think it's gonna sound so much better. And I'm hoping that I can get the boost down just a little bit more, like I said before. What happened was I also bought an aftermarket K member and control arms to go with the long tubes because it's, you're gonna be right there. I hate having to pay a shop to do things more than once. No way in hell am I doing long tubes. I've done them before on my 94 Cobra, throwing some pictures into the video. I've done the jack stands on a concrete floor in a garage before with long tube header install. I'm never doing it again. Take my money, please, somebody put them in, <laughs> is my mindset when it comes to thinking about doing it on this car. 
So huge props to Lost Car 5.0 for doing it on his own at his house because I've done it before, I know what it's like and it's not fun. As far as it going to the shop, I'm not as sure exactly when that's going to happen. I'm trying to get it in, but um, the other problem is that the K-member is on back order. So I'm not expecting the K-member to arrive until sometime in early to later April. Like, probably like mid-April is what I was told. So that kind of backs things up for getting the car into the shop to get all that done. So what will most likely happen is once the weather turns, it's early March right now, it's cold and rainy and raw, it, the weather sucks right now. We're getting pretty close to being able to get the car out and driving it, and I'll have some more videos actually out driving in the car once I get it out. But if you want to see what else is in store for the Cobra, and of course what the dyno numbers come out to with the long tubes, and there'll be a Torco pull too. So that video of not wanting a 750 horsepower Cobra, Maybe I'll end up with a 750 horsepower Cobra anyway with the Torco and the long tubes, but we'll have to wait and see. So if you're new here, uh, feel free to sub. It uh, doesn't cost anything. You can always unsub if you don't like the content down the road. And if you made it this far in the video, make sure to leave it a like. It really does help. Thanks for watching.